Thank you very much. <clears throat> I, good morning and thank you to and let me explain about the history about of uh, navigation microscopy. It started in 2002 and it is 10 years already. It started as a binary two-dimensional uh, navigation to peripheral lesions without any images. It's only the way of the LG, the sensor that went on. Finally, we went and performed on animals with the CT. We produce a peripheral lesion because the pigs don't have uh, lung cancer. And uh, we have the uh, luck to have a result of that lesion that was embedded in uh, methylene blue. And we could see that the methylene blue that when we took the first biopsies. Finally, we went into prone position on the animals as uh, to see a regular uh, because they don't move and it's better to perform the bronchoscopy. Uh, if you do uh, animal studies, you need it's a new world, it's not a human anatomy, and you have a lot of uh, bronchi coming there from every world, and you need to memorize them. And it was good to me because I performed the navigation bronchoscopy relying on the system and not on my experience on humans. And finally, we performed the first uh, human studies. Uh, the first uh, five uh, patients were in Israel. We were able to reach uh, the lesion and perform some, uh, some of them with the positive diagnosis. Then we continue in Eidenberg with Professor Becker. And we have, uh, although they have, they perform on the uh, uh, total anesthesia, uh, rigid bronchoscopy, and then the flexible bronchoscopy for peripheral lesions compared to our center that we perform in conscious sedation. We have almost the same uh, yield on more or less the same size of lesions. And in 2004, uh, navigation bronchoscopy became a hit. And uh, Tom Gildea performed the next study in the United States in Cleveland. And he was able to reach uh, and to have a better yield. Instead of 69%, uh, he went to 76%. Uh, he also performed a uh, transmog candida aspiration of uh, lymph nodes, having a 94.7.7 uh, yield. When I spoke uh, to him, he said that he has already 100% every time. And he's also an expert in IBAS. So you can perform a transmog candida aspiration to ministerial lymph nodes using the system. It has, uh, at that time, a nice uh, uh, feature that you can see where you are. You know where is the lymph nodes in the city. You mark it as a target, and you know how uh, is your direction to the target. So we perform several studies. And finally, we have more or less in the 70s uh, yield uh, in humans, the 89 is in animal. You can use also the PET to help you to know where to punch your, uh, that lymph node, where it's a positive uh, PET uh, lymph node, and you can perform your transmontane aspiration. You can reach almost uh, small lymph nodes. And finally, the the, all the uh, experience, it is about in the 2007 that almost all the, the centers, they perform a lot of uh, uh, procedures having a range of 70 to 75 percent yield in peripheral lesions, two centimeters average size, and they also have also a, a good experience with transplant kidney aspiration of uh, the lymph nodes with very few side effects. We continue to use the system. It was the first system developed by Superdimension. We were able to punch also uh, most of the, the lymph nodes and have a good deal on the peripheral lesions and also on the lymph nodes. We were more or less, as uh, Tom, if they had the uh, yield with the, the external lymph nodes, and we improve our yield to 74% to the peripheral lesions. 
compared to a regular uh, transmontane respiration without any help of uh, uh, navigation system and we were quite good uh, we have a yield of 62 percent but with the navigation system we were able to reach the 94 percent the issue is small peripheral nodules and when we are going to a uh, lesion that they are less than two centimeters the yield of the 70s goes down to 60s the company continued to develop uh, different features to help us to perform the navigation more easily. One of the first one was the tripad that generates from the CT images and you can see your lesion that you marked previously on the laptop. You can see what's the airway that is going to reach that area and you can play with the system to be familiar how is your complex uh, airway that is reaching that specific uh, lesion? But uh, finally, they uh, develop the system that you can see a three-dimensional three CT. And uh, on my last patient using that uh, software, I was able to know where to turn the uh, LG in the airway to reach that uh, small peripheral lesion, and it was positive. So this uh, 70, uh, 80 year uh, female heavy smoker that has a small peripheral lesion on the left lung, left upper lobe, and uh, we continue, and we were not able to have a good diagnosis. We perform a CT guided uh, FNA, and uh, we have a negative result also on the FNA. So you can see here that you can travel through the airways using the 3D CP. You can use the system of the, the planet system also for other stuff that they, they don't uh, tell you. And one of the things that I use is to measure the uh, area of the place that where, where I'm going to place the stand. In this case, uh, you can measure the long, the and you can have a, a virtual bronchoscopy images of that patient generated by the CT. When almost uh, several centers are uh, doing the navigation bronchoscopy, it was clear that you need to be aware that if you have the bronchus sign, a bronchus that's coming to to the uh, an airway that is coming to the lesion an airway that is coming to the lesion, your yield will be almost 100%. But if you don't have a bronchus sign, for example, here you have the lesion, and your airway is coming around, or in this case, it's coming straight ahead, and your airway, your lesion is on the side, you need to be aware to place your LG, your sending working channel, more or less when you can see in front of you the lesion. In this case, will be here. In this case, will be here. And maybe you can use a needle to pass the airway and reach actually the, the lesion. There is a debate now in the literature about the cryo biopsies. You can use a cryo to uh, grab a five millimeters biopsy, and uh, it is without any. Uh, uh, problems of the forceps on the, uh, on the biopsy itself. First, when the Martin uh, Hetzel presented his uh, data about the uh, transbronchial uh, cryo biopsies, everyone thought that he's crazy because he makes, uh, you need to pull out all your system, the patient starts bleeding and you don't, you don't know because you're not inside to see it. He showed, uh, he showed that he's, it's feasible without uh, uh, side effects. And finally, in the states, they become uh, more acquainted to this, uh, with the system of cryo. And maybe we need to use it also to perform a transmontal biopsy, have a good junk of biopsy to have a good diagnosis for interstitial lung, lung disease and also for tumors. The system is also being used by more than 100 uh, surgeons 
to perform a deviation bronchoscopy to peripheral lesion, made the diagnosis, then made the treating the treatment, the surgical treatment. But if they have a negative diagnosis, they mark the pleura with dye, they perform the buds, they saw the dye and they know where to grab the wedge biopsy to have the diagnosis. And if, if it's a positive diagnosis, if a positive diagnosis, then the patient will have his lobectomy. And another treatment application is to place the, the diffusion markers uh, for the brachytherapy. It's not being used in Israel because we don't have the cyber right, but in, in the state that they have the cyber right is very important. So this, the, the radiation is moving with the respiration based on the information of those uh, place markers. Now the new age is coming. The company developed another system that make or will make more uh, acquainted to the yield, higher yield of the 70s. They have the H shake uh, LG is a catheter that is already bent and it's flexed and is stiff when and <clears throat> you can reach the lesion that is on your side it will stay on that side looking in a, the position in front of it. The other feature is that you can use with one hand and you can push and turn the a catheter without need for the third hand that was the problem all the time. So it is bent. You have a 45 degrees uh, uh, angle or 90 degrees or 180 degrees. Here is with the uh, sensor, with the LG, without. And you can reach easily the anterior posterior of the left upper lobe or the apical segment of the right upper lobe because it will go all the way around. So you have the new handle of the LG. Here it attached to the bronchoscope, and it's a telescope. It has 107 centimeters, so this, the shortest forceps is 110, so every uh, tool will go inside without problem. You attach the handle of the actual LG inside, and you have it on your uh, bronchoscope altogether. Here you see how it is attached with the click, and you have your bronchoscope, your navigation system on it, and with both, with your two hands, you can manage to do all the procedure by turning and pushing until you reach the lesion. You need to protrude the uh, LG uh, almost one centimeter, so we will not be uh, with the, uh, any problems about the electromagnetic field, and you can press and continue your navigation. So how is done? The first step is to do the planning on the laptop. You can do it immediately before the procedure or the day before or the week before. You <coughs> mark actually the lesion as a target and that's all. And you are done. You can measure the, the lesion. You have the, you can do, you can see the pathway. It generates a 3D a tree and you can see what's the actual accurate airway to reach that lesion. You can see your virtual uh, bronchoscopic images to see what's your actual way to get that target, having your CT also co co connected, and then you can go to the procedure. <clears throat> Before we need to do the uh, registration points and to uh, fit, uh, fix uh, the uh, the body of the patient to the CT now is done automatically and you can continue and do the actual uh, bronchoscopy. You have your airway marked, which is the accurate airway to turn. And once you don't see anything on your bronchoscope, you continue with the system. You know that you are here, this is your, uh, your target, wrong way here. It, it tells you to turn 
and you can see on the virtual microscopy images and uh, excuse me on the CT the way market and until you reach the lesion. You can turn the CT images to see that you are actually in the lesion is in front of you, then you can perform your forceps, the biopsies and use your needle. So this is the uh, six uh, images that you can change almost every one for those that the, you're more familiar to use. You see the, uh, the banana LG because it's the vented one already. And uh, you can see that the, it is looking in front of the lesion. To see that if it's your accurate airway, you can uh, move the tree while you are pushing your LG towards the lesion that will be here. Instead of going to the wrong way, you can base all your movements of one image or you can see all the six all together. Once you are near the lesion, it's good to see on the, uh, this uh, uh, image you can turn it and to see if it does move. You can turn it and you can see if your lesion is actually in front of you so you can perform your biopsies. And it's good to have your X marked in front to, on the center of the lesion so you will know that all your uh, forces biopsies will take from that part. But what the, if it, you have a problem that you have a, a, an airway this passing through, you stop here, but you need to turn a little bit, and you're not uh, uh, sure that you are going to take all the uh, biopsies from this area. So one of the things, uh, once you push out your LG, you don't have the navigation. You push your forceps inside. You reach the area, you can use fluoro as we usually use to see that the forceps opens, that you are grabbing something. But because it is a, a angulated a, a extended working channel, you can turn the extended working channel and you can grab biopsies from almost every direction in the area of the lesion to increase your yield of having a good, uh, a positive uh, diagnosis. So once you reach the lesion, you can move it. it doesn't. Okay. So you can see that you are really in front of the mass instead of being tangential to it. And finally, the only thing that we uh, are afraid in terms of side effects is a negative bronchoscopy, as uh, Professor Turmeta told me, teach me, and convince me that that's what we need to do. To do the, the best that we can do on the patient to reach the diagnosis before we send him to a more invasive procedure, more, more side effects, for a diagnosis instead of for a treatment.